We're back. 51,000 people are going to be here tomorrow. We are ready. It is time. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Devotion to Promotion, where we're at the end of Season 4 with Nun Eaton Barrow trying to take them from the bottom of British football to the top. A huge match because it's a playoff match. The winner goes to League 1. The loser stays in League 2. But unfortunately, before we go any farther with this episode, I have a huge confession to make. The confession is that I am an idiot because the match is already done. I just finished it. I just recorded everything. I just shot everything. Um, it was a dramatic match, to say the least. And unfortunately, I have my pop filter right on top of the mute button, which I now know is a mistake because I must have, as I was adjusting the pop filter, just getting ready to shoot. I always test right before I shoot, and I tested it. Audio was fine. Then I remember adjusting the pop filter, and I must have hit the mute button, which is really sensitive and right under the edge of the pop filter, which is, a I realize now... A stupid place to put it and I must have hit it because I recorded the whole match and we have no audio so that's why I'm showing this screen behind me because I can't show almost any screen has the result of the match and it would ruin any kind of suspense that I'm trying to maintain for the match but what I'm thinking I can do is talk a few things about the little the kind of the pre-match stuff then I'll jump in and show the extended highlights and maybe narrate over those as to what I was feeling and thinking about at the time and then do a quick wrap up. And I realized that totally sucks because I'm I'm pretty bummed about how everything went because, it, I mean, it's kind of a big match in the club's history too and I've kind of lost the whole thing. And I, I don't want to go back and play it again. That wouldn't be right in any way to do it. Um, so I feel like that that's the less that's this is the lesser of all those evils. But I'm so sorry that I screwed it up. I feel really bad. Um, I've made notes on what to do now going forward. I'm going to adjust the pop filter and I'm going to make sure I have a visual check on my mic before I start. So I think I can avoid it in the future, but I'm still learning. I'm kind of new at this and I'm still learning. If you uh, I, I feel kind of awkward about this, but if you still happen to be uh, willing to like a video made by an idiot, likes would be greatly appreciated. And if you're new and want to subscribe to the Idiots channel, please feel free to subscribing to the Idiots channel. But um, I want to record the moment in some way, shape, manner, or form. So let's kind of go through some of the beginning things. Then I'm going to make a cut and jump into the highlights of the match because I don't think you can see the results there. And then I'll talk a little bit about what I was thinking. Then we'll go through the results and we'll talk a little bit about what's next. So maybe this is the second best thing. And if you don't know what the result is, I'm trying to see if I can mask it a little bit as I go through the episode. But anyway... We are at Wembley. I thought at the end, the end of the previous episode, I thought it was a home, be a home and a leg away playoff, but it turns it's one match at Wembley. 51,000 tickets sold, which is an order of about a magnitude of two and a half times what we've had anyone show up before for a match. So one of the things that's got me pretty excited about this is the financial, potential financial rewards. I don't know how the gate receipts work, but... I do now, but I'm telling you, I don't know how they work. But one of the potential things I was pretty excited about this match is the idea that, you know, when we played the Wolves in front of like 18, 19,000 people, I think we got like 150,000 pounds. So the potential here is that maybe more so than winning and losing is the fact that we might get like 200 to 300,000 pounds in gate receipts from this match, which would be huge. Because if you aren't familiar with the story of our club so far, we need money. We got the lowest, second lowest budget in the in the league right now. Our attendance was 19th out of 24 teams in League Two this year, so we're not generating a lot of revenue from ticket sales. Uh, we'd like to develop players, but our facilities are one star, basic, basically the worst in the league. So we can't really develop players and sell them all that well with that. So so many things we just need money for. We need money for wages. We need money for facilities. We got to somehow get more fans in the seats so that we can sell more tickets and get more revenue that way. And so there's just a lot of reasons why money becomes really critical, I think, for the next taking the next step in this club's history. So pretty excited about that. And there was also we got an, um, a notice we got 80 something thousand in FA Cup revenue just kind of popped in there for nothing. I guess it's divided up over the end of the competition. And that happened a little while. So with that in mind, the money wise, it looks like this could be a positive run for us. 
Um, a couple things, we'll talk a little bit about our lineups and stuff like that. And I think we're just going to jump right into looking at those highlights. This is the formation we went with, 4-1-2-3. And the reason I wanted to go with this one is this is kind of the bread and butter. It's the formation that led that surge in the middle of the season that brought us to the playoff spot on the table. And even though it struggled at the end of the season, I feel like this is better than anything else we could do. Now, we're playing Walsall. Um, we beat them 2 to nothing this season, and we drew them 0-0 during the season. So... Uh, and when using that, we, it was with a 4-3-3, but still on neutral ground against a really good team, I feel like this is giving, going to give us our best chance of playing, of getting a result from the, from the match. Um, across the board, O'Brien, our goalkeeper, uh, Kise, our right back. And interesting news about Kise, too, which I did mention in the original episode as well. Um, we have that stupid rule where you have to have a player on your team that's had three years of training with your club before they turn 21, and you have to have one on the starting roster. And that's why we got this guy, Slater, who was a goalkeeper. He's 15 years old. He just plays video games at the end of the bench for the whole game. Uh, Kise, because he's been with the club for three years, apparently now qualified for that, so he can get Slater off. So he's able to bring in a backup goalkeeper for this match, which is really good. So we no longer, as long as I guess we keep Kise on the team, we don't have to worry about the stupid rule. So I think Kise is going to stay with us for a while here. Uh, Delcroy at our defensive midfielder, he's been a rock back there. Phillips, our mummy, who's always hurt, managed to go 11, ma 11 days between the last match and this match without getting himself hurt, which I think pretty much is a record. He's a great player. He's just always been hurt. So he's going to start for us today. Kirby also notice about Kirby is that his team has set him for release because he's on loan with us. I did go in and try to sign him, but he wants like 5,000 pounds a week. And the maximum that our board would let us go to is over a little bit over 2,000. So unless that changes, there's just no way we're going to be able to afford him. Um, up at wings, we're going to go Martin, our newly acquired Martin. He's played really well. He's really good crosses. Uh, Robinson on the left, that inverted winger. And then Scrimshaw at our forward. He scored the two goals against Tranmere to send us to this match, which is the playoff final. Going to try him at target man first and then switch out to some other formation to see if it's good. But I think he gives us the best chance of scoring goals up front. With that, I think I've covered everything. Let me take a look at the notes that I had here before then. Yeah, I've covered pretty much everything. Um, and I think what I'll do now is I'll take a cut here and then I'm going to jump in and we'll go through the highlights. And I realize, gosh, this feels so anticlimactic. I'm so sorry. I feel really badly about it, but I, I don't know what else we can do. So it's better than not showing it all. So let's take a pause here. Then I'm going to jump in uh, and show the highlights and narrate some of the things I was thinking about. Then we'll get to the result at the end and then we'll talk about what's going forward. So let's take a and we are underway here. Nuneaton against Walsall. The stakes up are League Two. We are in the blues, heading from right to left, and Walsall is in their red uniforms. At this point, I'm kind of, uh, I, it's hard to tell, but I'm pretty nervous, but a lot less nervous than I anticipated. And one of the things I mentioned was I was pretty happy uh, that we beat Tranmere. I didn't expect us to get past them, so this felt a little bit like gravy. And with the realization that we're probably going to get a sizable chunk of cash out of this, I was thinking, okay, this is that, that previous uh, semifinal kind of redeemed our season. Now we're about 18 minutes in and nothing's happened. It's uh, been a very quiet match. Only We've only had one little match shot that didn't kind of result in a highlight. And then, of course, as one would expect now, it's time to demand more. They get a dangerous free kick from an open spot here and just go over the bar. This was um, their first real sniff of goal. And shortly thereafter, at this point, I'm thinking, you know, we, we've only had one shot. Maybe we should switch to our 4-3-3, pull Delcroy out and get a little bit more of an offensive lean. Martin comes down on the inside, though, hits Robinson, and boom, our first goal. We are up one to nothing. 23 minutes in. Martin uh, has been, you know, he was hurt for a while, but one of the things that he really can do well, he's, he is the guy who has a determination of three. There's a two when he got here, but uh, just got really fantastic crossing. Lays it right into the head of Robinson, who just slices it nicely inside the left post. One to nothing, 24th minute, and we are up. And once again, things start to go quiet here. Get another corner, or our first corner, I should say. Ball bounces loose. Shot by Phillips, which was a rocket. Nice save by the keeper. Gets us yet another corner. So we're sniffing all over their goal here, looking for that second goal. But it is not to be as Robinson runs it out of bounds. We'll go to 30 minutes. So at this point, I'm kind of happy with the way things are going. I mean, that the 4-1-2-3 formation is definitely a lot more conservative than our 4-3-3 or any other formation that we could use. 
So I'm kind of expecting it's going to be a match with less shots. And, but I'll take it if we've got six shots and, and they've got two or three at this point. If we're out shooting them by a ratio of two to one, I felt like changing it would have been a little bit dangerous. A compounding in on our goal. But the shot is blocked. Another dangerous free kick here and over the bar again. So we hold the one to nothing edge going into halftime. My message, of course, here, I think would it be is to, to don't uh, to, to avoid complacency. But again, we're at, you know, seven shots to four shots at this point. Pretty happy with how things are going, although I'm pretty certain it's not going to end one to nothing. You know, that's that's I think the realization here. But I'm not sure if there's any moves we could make that would actually enhance our chances to win. I was thinking again about the 4-3-3, but I, I hesitate to go with the 4-3-3 because once they tie it up, yeah, it puts us, you know, if we can hold on to this one goal lead, or at least uh, wait until they tie it up first, then before we start to make some moves. So our players are ready to walk through walls, and we will start off the second half here. Looking at some of our ratings, uh, everyone's doing okay. Scrimshaw, our forward, is not doing all that well. Uh, I think he's at a 6.5 at this point in time, but um, decided I didn't really see any obvious substitutions and you know, I think Scrimshaw's poor ratings are because we haven't get, been able to get him the ball very much. Martin comes down weakly to start the second half. Bounces it off the defender's shins. The highlight continues. Nice free kick with Phillips, who's got good free kicking ability there, but unable to do anything with it. Recycle the ball here. Clark comes down on the left. Feeds it back. Our passing, uh, again, now at this point, is looking really good. Kind of pinging the ball around a little bit. Making them chase us, which is is fine. I'll take this type of thing. And once again, we try to go down the right side. Martin with a nice cross in. Bounces to Scrimshaw in front. He twists and can't get the shot off away from the defenders. Ratcheting up the pressure here to start the second half. It's starting at this point. It was feeling pretty good. Uh, but still a long way to go for sure. And uh, many twists and turns in a match like this. Fed in front. Robinson, here it is. Oh, what a save. I felt like that was a chance to get that second goal. I'm hoping that isn't going to haunt us. But we get another corner right to the goalkeeper. I feel like the keeper's anticipating that uh, far post corner. And I, I have a sense the AI adjusts for that. But uh, maybe something to think about. I, I still wish or don't know if there's a way to alternate uh, set pieces. You know, say, okay, we want to go far post one time and then near post the other. Where you just have to continually man manually change that, which would be... A total pain in the butt to do that in a match so maybe we'll just have to live with it or come up with some other formations and change them on a match by match basis or something like that but we're getting ahead of ourselves a little bit once again an extended highlight get it to martin on the right hand side this time he holds up but feeds it in again he, he's done pretty well at this point in the match and i think we're, we're looking pretty good long shot goes way wide not even close but 10 shots to four and I'm not seeing anything out there. I'm kind of, it, you know, it's coming up on 60 minutes of time to look at substitutions. And my thinking at this point is I'm looking to do something that would improve us, but I don't see anything. And normally I'd be looking at wings to replace. Um, Scrimshaw has not worked really at, at target man. So we make the switch here to advanced forward to see if that will help get, get him in the game a little bit more. Outside wings are doing fine. Defense has done fine. And they really haven't had much of a, a sniff around our goal for quite a while except for some of those free kicks and we did spend a lot of time one of the things i mentioned here is that i feel like um unlike previous matches at the end of the season spent a lot of time working trying to understand the training calendars and things like that and now that we're full time to really work on that and set those all myself and i feel like for this match got kind of got that right oh special should have gone in so nice cross again by martin on the right hand side been a constant threat so far Another set piece. This one goes way over the crossbar. So 25 minutes to go. We're up one to nothing. Still a lot of decisions to make. They are fired up and ready to go. Dangerous free kick here. Bang off the top of the bar. Also knocking on the door. But yeah, I feel like we really got the training right. We played one friendly in between this match and the other match, and I'm just now cleaning up a yellow card to make sure they ease off tackles. Um, and I think I got enough match practice in so that almost all of our players were 98, 99% condition and close to 98, 99, 100% match fitness. So unlike when we played like the FA, FA Trophy Cup a few years ago where I, a lot of our players just weren't in top condition, I completely screwed up the training. I feel like I've learned a little bit since then and gotten better at that. 
Again, looking to see if there's any substitutions here at 71 minutes, but I don't see anything that would improve us. And with all of our players starting the match close to 100% match fitness, it just didn't look like we had anybody that was tired enough really to, to warrant the substitution. So risking it a little bit, but we're just not going for any substitutions here. We're starting to pick up yellow cards now. One to nothing, 12 minutes to go. Again, quiet, not much of a threat from them at this point. I start to slow the game down. So really try to stall for the last 10 minutes and nurse the one to nothing lead out. Kirby goes to ease off tackles on this one. Just so we don't pick up a second yellow card. Again, looking for a substitution, but I don't see anything that would improve us. And everybody's, Robinson's a little tired, but he does have the goal and has been performing pretty well. So didn't see the reason to change that. And here, hopefully squeezing this out, Clark gets a yellow card, putting in another ease off tackles. Five minutes. Again, a very fast match to this point. Super quiet, super fast, which I guess is kind of the nature of that 4 1 3, uh, 4 1 2 3. Extra time churns right through it. They get the ball down here with just seconds to go. We clear it out. The ball pounces, and there it is. I'm pretty happy, as you can see. We get the confetti and everything. So, we did it. We are promoted, which creates, I'll talk about this in a second, but I, I am, I'm stunned that we were able to go through and, and clear the playoffs like that. Well, so to be, to be honest, um, you know, they were, I think, ninth, and then they won their last match to just get seventh by one point. So they kind of snuck into the playoffs and were actually below us in the regular season. And I felt like when we played them during the season, we had kind of a, an advantage over them there. Uh, and so I felt like, you know, we were the favorites going into this match in terms of what the, the odds makers had had. And I felt like it played out somewhat to that. But again, this match really, you know, one to nothing could go either way. So we were pretty fortunate to come out of this uh, with that win. We praise everybody, say great job. And uh, we end the match here. And then I'm going to jump back in. So there is the completely anticlimactic overview, a uh, voiceover of the result. We pick up a one to nothing win and we're going to League One. So let's jump back in and I'll make a mention of what I kind of think that means for the, yeah, we'll just, we'll, let's jump back into the uh, live uptime here now. So, so now I'm back to real time live. This is the game as it stands. And as you can see, we have been promoted to league one. And I, I mentioned this in the video that got dubbed out, but I mentioned the video that got erased there, but I, I do have a few, th few thoughts on it. We'll go take a quick look at the inbox here, too, because there's some interesting things that have happened um, after the match here. Uh, da, 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 none promoted press conference about to begin. Uh, set initial budgets. So the board, yes, has raised our initial budgets to 36500 and a transfer budget of 144000 So 10000 more. I still have a feeling it's going to be the bottom of the next league, which brings me to my, my biggest point. And, and I, So one of the things that I mentioned in the video is that I was kind as, as to be totally honest, bluntly honest. I was kind of hoping we lost. And the reason is because if we look at our squad here, um, the only player who grades out at League One is Nya Kirby. And I don't think we're going to be able to sign him. I have a feeling that if we were to look at, maybe you can take a quick look here. If we were to look at the Skybet League One teams, and let's just poke around here a little bit, see the league table, and take a look at their wage budgets. Uh, so wage budget, 329000 That's 10 times larger than us. Now, they get promoted here, too. 180000 74,000, 430,000. Now they're only using 270,000 of it. 71,000 is what they're using. For Accrington Stanley, who looks like they read the bottom, 20, uh, 45,000, so still 10,000 more. 62,000, which they're using. 63,000, 61,000, 70,000, 67,000, 56,000. Yeah, 49,000. And they got relegated. So um, as we can see here, we, I, I, I kind of was thinking that might be the case and looking at it quickly now is the first time I poked around in there. It looks like that is the case. So as, as, as glad as I am to win, I mean, I would never play to lose and that that's for sure. So I, I wanted to try to win, but inside me, I'm thinking the best thing for our club might actually have been, and maybe people that are out there that have had this kind of situation, but I I'm thinking the best thing might've been that we would have lost 
so that we could have upgraded some of our players, got our finances in, let our attendance climb up a little bit more, and then make the jump to League One next year. I mean, there's not, we're going we're gonna to go forward anyway, of course. It's just the way it has to be. But you know, I was, I was somewhat hopeful that we would actually lose that match. And I was definitely not thinking we were going to get through the playoffs. One of the other things that I do should, should mention is that we signed all of our play, a lot of our players. I'm going to guess here, if I look at some of these contracts here, very similar. Promotion wage rise, 25%. Most of our players that are signed beyond the end of this year have promotion wage rises, rises of 20, 25, 30%. So that's going to eat up a huge chunk of our available funding as well. So bottom line is I feel like we're kind of screwed going on to this next season. It's going to be so hard. And we have nobody that grades out at League One level. So we, we really need to I don't know what we're going to do. So anyway, that's neither here nor there. Um, I, I we'll figure that out. We'll do a league, uh, a season wrap episode coming up. Uh, just a couple of other things here. Lots of good things being said. Board praised uh, Blitz. Blitz praised by Nanit and Faithful. Those are all good and happy things. Uh, a collective bonus paid out to the players of 180000 We've got 482000 in an EFL League 2 solidarity payment scheme. So for participating in League Bet Sky 2, Sky Bet League 2. So that's good. And then we got a chunk of cash. Looks like about three, maybe 250000 in gate receipts from it. Well, maybe more, maybe about four hundred. And then we had to pay out the hundred and eighty in bonuses and stuff like that. So we are at now $1.4 million. So I'm hopeful that Jimmy will loosen up his purse strings here and allow us to uh, get some better facilities in here. That could be huge. So... Well, that's about it. I, I'm almost more nervous that we're going up now because I think it's going to be it's going to be a challenge. But anyway, we'll go for it. Uh, going forward, it's now Sunday as I record this, and and so I'll going to kind of do some of the stuff to get ready for the league the, the year end episode. I don't know if I can do that between now and Monday. But so it might be Wednesday before the next episode comes up. Then we're going to do a preseason episode. Then we're going to jump into our first match of the season. So uh, this kind of stuff takes a while. And this is going to take a ton of time because we have so much to do with players in terms of trying to get ready for next season. But I'll be back uh, either Wednesday or Monday with a league season wrap episode. And we'll go forward from there. And again, I am so sorry for screwing up that recording. I feel really badly about it. I mean, as happy as I am that we're going up and as nervous as I am that we're going up, I feel really badly to screw up that kind of moment in time for the club and for the series and stuff like that. But uh, please accept my apologies for, for again, being a momentary idiot there for a bit. Uh, thank you again for coming by. If you uh, have enjoyed our somewhat uh, warped and twisted and broken episode, please uh, please give it a like in, in either case. And if you're new, please consider subscribing. I promise I will, will not, I will try not to make that same mistake again. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day. Bye.